In this video, we're going to begin looking at fractions and decimals. In particular, how do we change a fraction to a decimal, and then how do we change a decimal to a fraction? So to begin with, I'm going to take two examples. We're going to start with the fraction to a decimal. In example one, I give you two and one-eighth, and I say I want that as a decimal. Anytime there's a whole part of the fraction, that will be the number that goes in front of the decimal. This leaves us then just with the one-eighth. Remember, one-eighth is the same thing as saying one divided by eight. This fraction bar means the same thing as division. So if I set up then a division and I say, okay, I want to take one and I want to divide it by eight. Well, right now I know that 1 does not, is not divisible by 8, at least not evenly. So that means I need to add a decimal point, which then I'll put above and add a 0. 8 goes into 10 one time, so then I subtract 8. I'm left with 2. Since I still have a remainder, I need to keep going. I need to add a 0, which I bring down. 8 goes into 20, then three times. Eight times three, I'm sorry, make that twice, thinking six. See, even I make mistakes, but I catch myself. Okay, so if I put two, eight times two is 16, I subtract, I'm left with four. I add another zero because I'm not repeating it. Add a zero, eight goes into 45 times. So this will provide then what my decimal is. It becomes two, and 1 eighth is going to equal 2.125. 2 and 125 thousandths as a decimal. This is what's known as a terminating decimal. And by terminating decimal, I mean that it ends. There, I get to a point where there is a remainder of zero down here, which is why it terminates. So this is one example of how to change a fraction to a decimal. Example two, I have no mixed number in 5 elevenths, okay? I have no, um, it's just a simple fraction of 5 elevenths, so there is no whole part. So I can put a zero decimal point, and then it just becomes 5 divided by 11. So when I set it up, the 5 goes inside, 11 goes outside. 5 does not go into 11, so this means I need to add a decimal, followed by 0, so I'm going to bring the decimal up top. 11 goes into 50 four times, so 11 times um, 4 is 44. Subtract the 4, put a 6. I need to add another 0. Okay, 11 goes into 65 times. I subtract 55, gives me a remainder of 5. If I add a 0, 11 goes 50 into 54 times. Subtract the 44, I'm left with 6. Okay, if I put a 0, 11 goes into 60, 5 times. Subtract 55, left with a remainder of 5. So basically, this cycle will continue. Therefore, I can say that my decimal that 5 elevens as a decimal is 0.45, where the 4 five and 5 is repeated. So this will become my answer. Okay, I don't need to write it over here. I have it twice, 4, 5, 4, 5. This is just enough to show that it's repeating, that the cycle will keep um, continuing as I keep adding zeros. But when I write my answer, I'm just going to write the 4 and the 5 once because it's the shortest way. This is what's known as a repeating decimal. If I am going given a fraction to change to a decimal, I will always end up with a terminating decimal or repeating um, decimal. This is what are called rational numbers. Okay, for a category, just to introduce some terminology. Okay. 
To change a decimal to a fraction is really dependent upon the place value. So if I'm given a value of 3.6, okay, I have two options. If I know I want a mixed number, this part will be always be the whole number. And then the 0.6 really means 6 tenths. So what that means is I'm dealing with 6 out of 10, which then I can take and reduce to 3 and 3 fifths. Okay. What I can also do is if I realize that this is um, 3.6, it's 3 and 6 tenths, I can just put the whole thing over 10 and then reduce it and then turn it into a mixed number. So you have two options by which to proceed. So for example, if I had 2.001, this would be 2, and this would be my tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. So my answer will be 2 and 1 out of 1,000 as a mixed number. Okay. So actually to change a decimal to a fraction is a little bit easier because it's all about the place value. So if you can remember tenths, hundreds, thousands, okay. the next one will be ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millions, so on and so forth. Okay, Kind of increasing. Ending in a THS. If it ends in a THS, it means that it's a decimal value. So anyway, that's pretty much about what um, you do. Um, in general, if I'm asked to compare values and I'm given a mixture of decimals and fractions, um, the easiest thing is probably just to change them all to decimals. Um, sometimes you are able to use a calculator, particularly as it gets more challenging. Um, but I do want you to focus in on basically the fact that a fraction just basically means division. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, looking forward to practicing tomorrow.